What's going on guys, welcome back to Nolan TCG, and we are back here today for another month of the deck introduction series. So of course this month, you've seen it in the thumbnail, it is Introduction to Therians, I believe that's how you pronounce it. If it's not, I'm going to butcher this video so badly. Uh, but essentially this is going to be coming out in the next main set. All of the monsters are essentially different, uh, different typings, so you've got like warriors, psychics, machines, aquas, plants. And they can all free summon themselves by using that either more Therians or the archetype that or, that or the typing that they are. And then you just kind of gain pluses off that. Each of them does certain things, but we'll go through them as we break them down. Uh, but before we do get started, as always, please do remember to drop down below and hit that subscribe button if you are new here, because we are always happy to have new people to the channel. And let's get on into this introduction too. So the first list that I've chosen to show off is, so all of these are like OCG topping lists. Uh, each of them kind of does something different, and we're going to talk about the reasons why they do the kind of different. But the first list I've gone with is the plant list. Um, essentially, this is the probably the only list that played all of them. So I thought it was more interesting to bring this list first, so we can get into it and talk about what all of the cards do. So first off, you have probably the best one. It is the three of in this deck, along with the, uh, the Lily. So you've got three copies of King Regulus. Uh, so King Regulus is target one Therians monster or one machine monster in your graveyard. Like I said earlier, uh, it uses both Therians or the typing that he is. Uh, so target one in your graveyard, special summon this card from your hand and if you do equip that monster to this card. When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can send one Therians monster card from your hand or field to the graveyard, negate that effect. Uh, so keep in mind it can send itself, it doesn't need to send something else, this is where they all kind of get pluses. But if you are equipping another one from Grave. I do believe it can still activate because it is just field. It doesn't say monster zone. So if you have another Therians in your graveyard, you can equip that when it summons, and then you can use the effect by banishing out one from your spell and trap zone, let's say your equip zone. And then they all have this like kind of weird effect after that, if we can get across here quick enough. Uh, so you can only use each of the preceding effects of the King Regulus once per turn. Uh, and then they all kind of have the effect where a, a Therians monster equipped with this card gains 700 attack. Um, and the and the preceding effects of King Regulus. Oh, okay, I never realized that before. This is why I always read the last line of text, kids. Uh, so yeah, that is quite good. That's the reason why we're playing him. We're playing the Lily. Uh, we're playing two of Leaper, which is also pretty good in this list, but Duke, bad. Uh, Bulls, decent, but it kind of, it will come up as it comes up. Uh, so the second one we're going to talk about is Lily Boria. Uh, so this one is like a plant monster and a Theron's monster from your graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand if you do equip that monster. Um, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, add one Therian spell traps card from your deck to hand. Uh, keep in mind that does not say Therians. So in this plant list, you can equip any plant monster from grave, send it, good times. Uh, and then, of course, you can only use each of the preceding effects of uh, Therian's Liliboria once per turn, and then it gains the 700 attack and the preceding effects of Liliboria. Uh, next off, we have the two of being played in this list, which is Leap of Fam. Uh, this one is, I think this is meant to be Meluseek. Uh, they all are kind of just other cards from the past, revamped for this archetype. Uh, so this is a Therians and an Aqua. Uh, special summon this card from your hand, and if you do equip that monster to this card. Uh, during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can target one Theron's card in your spell or trap zone, or one and one card your opponent controls, return them to the hand. So in a deck where you're playing pretty much more of the Therians cards, you can definitely just use this with the other stuff. So you can go Leaper, equip King Regulus, it can use its own effect, or it can use King Regulus's effect. And then you just, of course, bounce it to the hand, and then you can summon the Regulus on the follow-up turn. Uh, and then, of course, it does have the other effect, um, where you can only use each of the preceding effects once per turn. A Therian's monster equipped with this card gains 700 attack and the preceding effects of Therian's Leap of Fam. Uh, and then we have the other two one-offs. We'll go with Bull, because Bull is significantly better. So uh, you can target one Therian's monster or one Warrior monster you control uh, in your graveyard. Special summon this card, and if you do equip that card, uh, you can only target one. Th uh, you can target one Therian's card. Therian's card. Uh, you control, and one card your opponent controls, destroy them. So it's not a quick effect, but it is still a pop. Still a decent card, much better than the other one. Uh, and then you can only use the preceding effects once per turn, and then it gets the standard equip, 700, and the preceding effects effect. Uh, and then lastly, we have Therian's Duke Jewel. Uh, this is the worst one. Uh, so this is target one Therian's monster or one psychic monster in your graveyard, special summon this card, if you do equip it. You can only use each of the following effects of Therian's Duke once per turn. Or you can only use each effect of Therian's Duke once per turn, because the other two effects don't matter. Uh, it's while you control an equip card, Therian's monster can't, Therian monsters you control can't be destroyed by a card effect. Uh, and then a Therian's monster equipped with this card gains 700 and the preceding effect of Therian's Duke Jewel. Uh, so it is pretty much just your protection. I guess you can use it to make like your Regulus big, and then it also gains the protection from being popped by card effect, but 
it's it's not the best. Uh, next off, we'll go into the spell traps, uh, trap cards, and the spell and trap cards are surprisingly good, pretty much because they loot themselves. Uh, so the main one you've got here is potential uh, perpetual engine aggro system. So this is send one Therian's card from your deck to the graveyard. It's pretty standard, but it does set up everything else. Like you can just then, of course, summon and equip. Uh, if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Therian's card in your graveyard, add this card to your hand, or that card to your hand, uh, and place the other card in the bottom of the deck. You can only use one Perpetual Engine Aggro System effect once per turn, and once that turn, and only once that turn. Uh, so the reason why that is important, or this card is important, is because essentially it just loops anything you want. Like, if you don't have the right card for the right situation, you just get back the Aggro System. You can't then use the next effect that, that effect same turn, so it is a little slow that it's got to have some kind of restriction, otherwise it'd just be able to just really dump anything to the graveyard, and that would be absolutely insane. The card is still very good. It toolboxes out pretty much your entire deck, and when you combine it with the field spell, that's quite good. Uh, next off, we of course do have the field spell. It is Theron's Ring Colosseum Saucer. When this card is activated, add one Theron's monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, pretty standard, just generic searcher for everything. And then you can dump whatever the other thing you won't want is, and then it sets up everything. Now, uh, weirdly, no terraforming this list though for this for the spell. Uh, and once per turn, if a monster will be destroyed by battle, you can send one Theron's card or one perpetual engine aggro system from your deck to the graveyard instead. So it works on a foolish. If any monster you control will be destroyed by battle, it doesn't have to be a Theron's monster, which is quite cute. Uh, yeah, and then its other effect is once per turn, when a monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can target one Theron's monster in your graveyard add it to your hand. So just plain and simple, if they try to beat you over twice, you just get the dump, and then you get the add. Uh, which is quite cute. Quite cute. Uh, and then lastly, the effect is you can only activate one of the like field spells per turn. Doesn't stop you from only using one of the effects per turn or anything like that. You can just only activate one, which is fine, because you're only going to be netting that search anyway, because you can't really activate another one in the battle phase anyway. Uh, and then we go to our other spell card. So this is Theron's Charge. So to send one Perpetual Engine Aggro System or Theron's card from your hand or face up Spoiler Trap Zone to the graveyard, accept Theron's Charge, draw two cards. Just a plain and simple draw two. Uh, not a quick play, which kind of sucks, but at the same time you can loop it with the Perpetual Engine Aggro System because, hey, it's now in the graveyard, you haven't activated it, you can then use the effect to add back from graveyard if you would like. And then lastly we have the Negation, or I guess the Negation. It, it, it's kind of the Negation. It's Theron's Cross. Uh, so you can, when your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a Therian's monster, activate one of these effects. If you have one perpetual edge acro system in your graveyard, activate both effects in sequence. So it is a standard negation and then a banish. Uh, quite good, like quite, quite good, especially if you can establish both. It is like your essential engine for the deck. You just want to be like negging them and then killing them on the next turn. Uh, quite cute that it needs the, uh, the perpetual engine aggro system to revolve both effects, but hey, just a standard negation is still fine. Uh, you can only activate one Therian's Cross per turn, which is probably the reason why you see most lists just playing one copy unless they have a reason to play more, simply because using that effect should then be able to allow you to kill your opponent on the next turn, hopefully. Okay, next off we have a Striker list which features the, uh, the Therian's cards. This one has opted to go with Bulls, however, if you are a Striker player, there is something you can consider in that you can play Bulls or you can play Regulus. Uh, both work. There is no need to like play one or the other. You can play both if you want, or you can choose whichever one you need. Uh, this duelist opted for bulls because bulls is your free pop, so you can kind of clear board and keep kind of pushing through. But if you have regulus, you get the negation, which is also pretty fine. It clears itself off board, so then it won't worry about like messing up your spell and trap cards. But essentially, bulls is here because it's going to recur back your ray, and then you can do some cute stuff. But it's not really going to go hard plus. It's just going to be like there to stop your opponent and just like kind of like clear things out. Uh, it does also provide a 2100 BD stick, which is always cute for pushing that extra damage with Striker. Uh, but the list for this one is three copies of Ash, three copies of Vela, three copies of Maxi, your standard hand trap choice. Uh, three Ray, one Rose. Then we see the two copies of Bulls. Like I said before, yeah, you can play Regulus or you can play Bulls. Uh, then we see two Called By, three Desire, two Desires, one Rotor, one Afterburners, one Drones, two Shark Cannon. Two Widow Anchor, two Multi Roll, two Engage, because of the weird way that the OCG has this entire engine. Uh, then we see three of the new cards Sky Striker, Mobilize, Linkage. Uh, so if you control them monsters, you may monster zone. Send one card you control to the graveyard, and if you do special summon one Sky Striker Race Monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone. And if you have at least one light or dark Sky Striker monster on the field or in your graveyard, 
The special summon monster gains 1,000 attack. For the rest of the turn, after this card effects resolves, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Sky Striker monsters. Uh, so, pretty good card for Sky Striker. Pretty damn good card. Quite scary. Uh, then we have one Terraforming, of course, after that, following up with our three copies of Colosseum Saucer, so we can add the bulls. Um, no copies of the aggro system in here, which is quite interesting, because I kind of figured it would be a spell card, at least it's free in the graveyard, and it's kind of get it back into the deck or add it back to your hand when you kind of need it. So it's pretty odd to like not see both getting played, but it's fine. Uh, and then we have three copies of Imperm coming through after that. And then extra deck, pretty standard, uh, with a rather cute tech actually. So we've got one copy of Zeke with three Shizuku, one Kainar, one Kagari, and three Hayate. Then we see the one Selene for the access code line with the Hulk, one Phoenix, and then we see a Dark the Dark Charmer. Because Dark Charmer can reborn... Uh, Albaz, and then go into Albion the Branded Dragon by super pulling your opponent, which is quite cute. Now, on the subject of playing Albaz, uh, we see a 60 card Albaz Therians list. Uh, rather cute, actually, to switch from OCG, TCG, OCG back to TCG or OCG, whichever, because we're going back in front here. Uh, so, list is not like top tier meta because standard Albaz is significantly more consistent, but it is something rather funny to play. Uh, and you're going to net so much pluses from playing this list. Uh, so starting us off for the 60 cards, we've got one copy of Ad Libitum with the three Aluba, uh, three Ash Blossom, one DD Crow, one Tragedy, one uh, two Effect Veiler, three Albars, three Maxi, one Nibiru, one Shadol Beast. Then we hit the Therians package, which is what we're here for. So we're playing one Duke here with the two copies of Regulus and three copies of Lily Arborea. Uh, one copy of Griffin Rider with the two copies of Water Enchantress for our Brave package. Uh, three copies of Branded Fusion, of course, with three Branded in Red and three Branded Opening. Uh, two copies of Called by the Grave with one Cross Out, one Draco Back, and one Fateful Adventure. One copy of Foolish Burial with the three copies of Perpetual Engine Aggro System. Two copies of Pot of Desires with three copies of Pot of Prosperity. Two Rites of Armor Seer. Two copies of That Grass Looks Greener, along with three copies of the Colosseum Saucer. Two copies of Impermanence, and the one Therian's Cross comes through after that. Then for the extra deck, of course... Just standard Alba stuff. We've got the two copies of Albion, one Quetus, one copy of uh, Winda, one Guiding Chimera, uh, one Steering Dragon, one Blazing Dragon, one Ice Blade Dragon, one Dragostapelia, with our Numeron package of a Dragoobleon, a Hope Harbinger, and a Numeron Dragon, with one Link Spider and one Verte Anaconda. But that does wrap us up here for the introduction to for this month. Uh, if you are going to be playing Therians, what are you going to be mixing it with? I definitely don't see this as being a deck that you can just out and out be like, I'm a Therians player and play 40 Therians cards, because it simply doesn't work like that. You will need to mix it with something, so do make sure to comment them down below what you are going to be mixing it with. But as always, I've been Ben from Nolan TCG, and have a good afternoon, everybody.